Man mocks dad on flight, has no idea who he is. Alan Thompson was a man who commanded respect, though he rarely sought it. As a retired military officer turned executive, his presence was enough to make people sit up straight. Today, he was just trying to make it back to Boston after a long week of business meetings in Chicago. His eight-year-old son Jake was traveling with him, excited about their weekend plans. As Alan and Jake made their way down the aisle, Alan found their seats in a row near the middle of the plane. Jake took the window seat, pressing his nose against the glass to watch the ground crew. Alan settled in the middle, leaving the aisle seat empty, hoping they might get lucky and have a bit more space. A few minutes later, a man in his mid-forties approached, huffing slightly as he reached the overhead bin. He placed his bag with a heavy thud and plopped down in the seat. Immediately shifting uncomfortably, Alan glanced at him and offered a polite nod, which was met with a cold stare. The man sighed loudly, adjusting himself and muttering under his breath. Alan ignored him, focusing instead on helping Jake with his seatbelt. But the man's discomfort was palpable. He scooted to the very edge of his seat, nearly pressing himself against the armrest as if to create more distance between himself and Alan. Is something wrong? Alan asked, his voice calm and measured. The man turned to him with an exasperated look. Yeah, something is wrong. Can't you tell? You stink of cheap cologne, and you're taking up too much space. Alan was taken aback by the bluntness. Excuse me? You heard me, the man spat. You and your kid are a nuisance. I can't believe I have to sit next to you for this entire flight. Jake's eyes widened at the harsh words directed at his father. Alan felt a protective surge but maintained his composure. I'm sorry if we're causing you any discomfort. We'll try to be as unobtrusive as possible. That's not the point, the man retorted. People like you shouldn't be allowed to fly. You think you're so important, but you're just a burden to everyone else. Alan could feel the tension rising, his son's eyes still wide and confused. The plane was filling up, and the surrounding passengers started to notice the exchange. One of them, a young woman named Lisa, who was sitting in a row behind, took out her phone and began recording, sensing that the situation might escalate. Alan took a deep breath. Look, we're just trying to get home. There's no need for this kind of behavior. The man leaned closer, his face contorted with disdain. You think just because you're wearing a suit and have a fancy watch, you're better than everyone else. Well, you're not. You're just an overgrown brat with a kid who probably doesn't even know who his real father is. The insult hit Alan like a punch to the gut, but before he could respond, a firm hand clasped on his shoulder. He turned to see a large man standing over him, his expression serious. Sir, the man said, directing his gaze at the irate passenger, I'm going to have to ask you to calm down. Your behavior is unacceptable. The man looked up, startled. Who the hell are you? I'm a police officer, the man replied, pulling out a badge, and I don't tolerate bullying. I've been listening to your abuse, and I've gotten it all recorded. The color drained from the rude passenger's face. He glanced around, realizing that several other passengers were now watching and recording the confrontation. His bluster faded quickly, replaced by a nervous twitch. Alan watched the man's reaction, feeling a mix of relief and vindication. The police officer's intervention had shifted the power dynamic completely. Jake tugged at his father's sleeve. Dad, what's happening? Alan squeezed his son's hand reassuringly. It's okay, Jake. The man was just being rude, and now he's being taken care of. The police officer turned back to Alan. Are you okay, sir? Alan nodded. Yes, thank you. We appreciate your help. The officer looked at the rude passenger again. I suggest you apologize to this gentleman and his son. Otherwise, we'll have to involve the airline staff and you might find yourself removed from this flight. The man's bravado had entirely evaporated. He mumbled a half-hearted apology, not meeting Alan's eyes. The officer gave him a stern look, then nodded to Alan before returning to his seat a few rows back. The plane was now fully boarded and the flight attendants were preparing to take off. Alan turned to his son, who was still processing what had happened. It's all over now, buddy, he said softly. Let's just enjoy the flight. Jake nodded, but his expression remained troubled. Why was that man so mean, Dad? 
Alan sighed, searching for the right words. Sometimes people have a lot of anger inside them, and they take it out on others. But we don't let that change who we are. We stay kind and strong. Jake seemed to consider this, then smiled a little. You're strong, Dad. Alan ruffled his son's hair. Thanks, Jake. So are you. As the plane taxied and lifted off, the tension gradually dissipated. Alan leaned back his seat, trying to relax. He noticed Lisa behind him, still holding her phone. She caught his eye and gave him a supportive nod. A few hours later, the plane began its descent into Boston. The mood had lightened, and passengers were chatting quietly, ready to disembark. As they taxied to the gate, Lisa stood up and approached Alan. Hi, I just wanted to say I'm really sorry you had to go through that. I recorded the whole thing, and I'm planning to share it online. People need to see that this kind of behavior is not okay. Alan smiled appreciatively. Thank you, Lisa. That means a lot. Hopefully, it'll make a difference. She nodded. I think it will. You handle it with so much grace. Your son is lucky to have you. Thanks, Alan said, feeling a warm glow of pride. I just hope he learns something positive from all this. As they exited the plane and made their way through the terminal, Alan reflected on the day's events. He was exhausted, but also grateful. The support from the passengers and the intervention of the off-duty officer had turned a potentially scarring experience into a lesson in resilience and kindness. Back home, Alan tucked Jake into bed, the boy already drowsy from the long day. Good night, buddy, he whispered, brushing a stray hair from Jake's forehead. Good night, Dad, Jake mumbled, already half asleep. Alan closed the door softly and headed to his own room. He sat on the edge of his bed, thinking about how quickly things could change and how important it was to stand up for what was right, even when it was difficult. A few days later, Lisa's video went viral, sparking widespread outrage and support for Alan and Jake. People from all walks of life shared their own stories of encountering rudeness and discrimination, and many praised Alan for his composed response. The airline, Oceanic Airways, issued a public apology and announced new training programs for their staff to better handle such situations in the future. They also offered Alan and Jake complimentary tickets for their next flight, which Alan gracefully accepted. Alan's experience on that flight became more than just a personal ordeal. It was a catalyst for change, prompting discussions about respect and empathy in public places. It reminded everyone that standing up against rudeness and prejudice, no matter how small the act may seem, can make a significant difference. As the days turned into weeks, Alan and Jake continued with their lives, their bond stronger than ever. They knew that they had faced something ugly and come out the other side, not just unscathed, but empowered. Alan's quiet strength and Jake's innocent resilience had made an impact far beyond the confines of that airplane. The incident taught them both a valuable lesson, that dignity and respect are fundamental, and defending them is a responsibility we all share. It also reminded them of the power of community, how strangers can come together to support and protect one another, even in the most unexpected places. And so, Alan and Jake carried on, their story serving as a beacon of hope and a reminder of the importance of standing up for what is right, no matter where life's journeys may take them. From Alan Thompson's encounter on the flight, we learn about the importance of standing up against bullying and prejudice. Alan's calm and composed response to the rude passenger, along with the intervention of an off-duty police officer and the support of fellow passengers, highlights the power of community in combating injustice. The story underscores that dignity and respect are fundamental human rights and that everyone has a responsibility to protect them, regardless of the situation. It also shows that acts of kindness and solidarity can transform negative experiences into powerful lessons in resilience and empathy. Alan's story reminds us that we should not let the negativity of others define our actions. Instead, by maintaining our composure and standing up for ourselves and others, we can foster a more inclusive and respectful environment. Have you ever witnessed or experienced a situation where someone was being unfairly treated? How did you respond, and what did you learn from the experience? Share your thoughts and stories in the comments below.